5.30. I'm trying to get you not to forget it. Everybody says, why for God? That's what I'm preaching on tonight. That's the title of the sermon. Go with us Friday night. I know you ain't that dumb. You couldn't forget that. You couldn't forget it that much. All right. Ephesians chapter number 5. Now we have one young lady in here getting ready to get married here in a couple of weeks. Uh, raise your hand over our sister. Her real name's Jamie, but that's not what I call her. Uh, she's getting ready to get married here. In, is that two weeks from Saturday? Two weeks from yesterday. <whistles> Glad you told me that. Uh, I'm going to try to be here. Um, um, and some are on your way. Some are on your way out. Uh, some are just putting up with it. Some are enjoying your marriage. Some are wishing you wasn't. Some are wishing you was. And I noticed that about the flesh. The flesh is wants what it ain't God. You know what? Some girl comes in and said, I'm getting married. I want say, no, you're stupid, please. I would never do that. You're crazy. You know? But then all the young girls say, I want to get married and have kids and all that. That's a normal desire God puts in our heart. I am not an authority on this. Matter of fact, there may be people here tonight that say, well, Brother Danny, uh, what gives you the right to preach? It gives me, God's called me to preach and God's given me a Bible. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about it. And I could uh, sure give you some good advice if you'd listen to me tonight. Ephesians chapter number 5. Uh, I was talking to a young lady about this the other day. She was asking me this about what the Bible said about wives. And I told her about the wife being a subject to her husband. She said, I don't know if I could ever do that. And I said, well, you have something you better pray about, sister. Uh, look what it says. Verse number 23. Ephesians 5, 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and He is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Somebody said, uh, the husband's the head of the body, and the wife's the neck that turns the head. And that's what it usually is. She's turning that head. Verse number 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. Now, look at verse 8. So ought men to love their, own wi- their, their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Verse 33, this few ladies. Nevertheless, that every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. I want to talk to you a little bit about your marriage. The reason I'm doing this is because I am the pastor. I'm the best we got for now, I reckon. Doing the best I can. And uh, we have a lot of young couples in our church. A lot of young people in our church. And the devil has his gun turned on every single home in this building tonight. If you don't believe the devil will tear your home all to pieces, you've underestimated him. He's got his guns right now. He can't mess up you and your husband. He'll mess up one of your kids. If he can't mess up one of your kids, he'll get in the in-laws or the uh, uh, family and relatives. If he can't mess you up that way, he'll come through your church. But he'll never, ever leave you alone when you're trying to live for God and come. And the more you try to do for God, the more bigger battles you'll fight with the devil. The devil hates you. You understand that? He is our enemy. He's not your friend. He's not my friend. He hates my guts. I know the devil hates you. I can tell you stories here tonight that could not have been an accident. That had to be a work of Satan. While God's at work in our life, the devil is at work in our life at the same time. So really... A man uh, in this generation, a preacher has to about every couple of months take a Sunday night or a Wednesday night and just talk to you about this thing at home. Because everything you see on TV, if there's 
I, I read it somewhere, I don't know the exact statistics, but they say if there's a hundred bedroom scenes on TV, 98 of them are between people that's not married, even on the movie, presented as not married. The world does not respect our marriage at all. None at all. And if we're not careful, we'll let it just completely overrun us. And we've got to stick with what the Bible says. I know some of you have been through bad trouble in your marriage. I have too. So I got com- I'm, I'm sympathetic for you. I've got compassion on you. I'm not up here to judge you. And you people better not be careful about judging each other. Because it's liable to come home to you one of these days. I've heard people get up and really criticize people for this and that. And five years later, they're doing the very same thing they criticize them people for doing. So you better just keep your heart right and stay close together and do the best you can and serve God. And if you mess up, get it right with God and go on and serve God the rest of your life. But I want to talk to you tonight about, uh, uh, about marriage. And uh, when I first started preaching, I thought I had all the answers. And I went and I heard these guys speak on marriage. And I thought, now them guys know what they're talking about. If anybody done that, they'd never have no marriage trouble. Then I went and heard this preacher at camp meeting at Nebo one time. And he got up there and he said, bless God. He said, if my wife didn't do what I wanted her to do, I'd cram a dish rag in her mouth. And all the young preachers said, Woo! Amen, brother. And I didn't realize what a retarded man that was standing in front of me that night. I guarantee you, I know some he wouldn't cram no dish rag in their mouth. It hit him with a frying pan, buddy. I mean, it had to be about a frying pan in his mouth. I mean, people that preach like that, you see these, all these preachers that get up and preach like that, you know what they're, you know what they're, they got good wives. They got good wives that don't need a dish rag in their mouth. Amen. And so they've never had a wife rebel on them. They've never been through uh, trouble. They have not a clue what they're talking about. Then I heard these guys on the radio. And they were saying that they'd never been through any marriage trouble, never been through a separation, never been through a divorce. Never. And one of them guys said, if you ever get divorced, it had to be both of you's fault. And I thought, that sounds good. And I found out what an idiot that was. The Bible don't teach that. The Bible teaches there's an innocent party. It sure does. Like over in the Old Testament... Uh, so don't you let somebody tell you if you've been through a divorce that you're guilty the rest of your life. Or not, you can get right with God even if you're the guilty party. You can still get right with God and serve God. Am I right? And I, I'm telling you tonight, people got it all messed up. And some people say, every time I, every, everybody I talk to now says, well, I know what I've done. I just married the wrong person. I hear that all the time. I married the wrong person. I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. I should have never done it. I married. Now, that may be true in some cases. That may be. But the, divorcing the wrong person ain't the answer to marrying the wrong person. If you're married, you've got to make the best of it then. A- amen? And I'm going to talk about that just a little bit. I'll read you these. I, I read these, and I thought it was pretty neat. You know, when you uh, get married, you change your name. You're supposed to, unless you're in Hollywood. Uh, the woman changes her name to take her husband's name. And uh, listen to these. If they married... Listen to these. This is pretty neat. If they married... If Yoko Ono had married Sonny Bono, she would be Yoko Ono Bono. Now, I ain't a name like that. I ought to get... I started to say I ought to get a divorce. They should. If Bo Derek married Don Ho, she would be Bo Ho. That's a good name for her, ain't it? If Dolly Parton married Salvador Dolly, she would be Dolly Dolly. If Olivia Newton-John married Wayne Newton and then divorced him and married Elton John, she'd be Olivia Newton-John Newton-John. If Sandra Locke married Elliot Ness and then divorced and married Herman Munster, she'd become Sandra Locke Ness Munster. If B. Arthur married Sting, she'd be B. Sting. If, listen to this, if Liv Ullman, I don't know who some of these are, married Judge Lance Ito, you know, Ito, Ito, uh, Ito whatever his name was, Ito, uh, that was on the O.J. trial, and she divorced him and married Billy Beaver, she'd be Leave It to Beaver. If Ivana Trump, Donald Trump, was Donald Trump's wife, I reckon. Ivana Trump, whatever her name is. Married in succession, Orson Ben, King Oscar of Norway, and Louis B. Meyer of MGM, and Norbert Wiener, mathematician, she would be ever been an Oscar Meyer Wiener. If Tuesday Well 
had married Hal March the 3rd, she'd be Tuesday March the 3rd. And if Snoop Doggy Dog married Winnie the Pooh, he'd be Snoop Doggy Pooh. <laughs> Out of way. Well, you know what? You know, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. I know some people that if my name was what their name, I'd change my name. Yeah, I do. Lord have mercy. I'll still go through life and I'm not going to repeat some of them, but if my name's what their name was, I believe I'd have it changed. Have you ever met anybody like that? Oh, Lord, I wouldn't go. Who are you? I, I ain't going to say it. Uh, but anyway, I got thinking about this. Now I've heard these preachers that's got all the answers. And normally, when we think about getting married, we're talking to young people and giving them advice about getting married, we are... Uh, we are uh, we we got it in our minds who we think and what we think would be a good marriage, and I think that's okay. And I got my own opinions too. But the truth is, a lot of people have went by all them rules and still messed up, still messed up. Like money, you take one of them's got some money, and the other one don't got money. People say, "Well, they'll never get along." Sometimes they will. You can't say that. Bible don't say that. Uh, uh, if you marry somebody just for their money, you probably won't. But if you, if you marry them hoping they'll die so you can get their money, you'll die before they will. Usually. That's the way it usually works. But did you, uh, money ain't going to do it. Well, it looks. I've heard people say, well, they don't matter. Have you ever heard anybody say that? How in the world did he ever get her? How in the world did she ever? And, and I thought that myself. I hate to say that. But I, I thought, boy, yeah, boy, he must have you know, something on the ball. You know, he must uh, he can talk stars out of the sky or he's changed a lot or something. Uh, since then, or she'd have never married him, or he'd have never married her. And that don't always, always uh, do it either. Uh, social standing. Somebody can come from one social background, somebody else can come from an entirely different social background, and their marriage work. What makes that? And then other times, people raise up and have the same culture, same background, same church, same religion, everything, get married, and it goes sour and be divorced in two years. So you better be careful about saying, you should marry this person, you should marry that person. You don't know about stuff like that. And I don't either. I used to think I did. I found out I didn't. There's some of them that you think will never make it, that God blesses and has a wonderful home. I, I had a friend of mine in Marion, many of you know this lady, she married her husband, she was backslid, he was lost. Lost as a goose. Lived like the devil. And God blessed him. He wound up getting saved. She wound up getting right with God. Lived 40 years together. Had a great marriage. Isn't that something? Then I've seen other people date right, do right, didn't see them before they got married, went to the marriage altar, pledged their vows together, and had hell on earth from their honeymoon on. I explain that. I've heard people say they're not compatible. I've heard people say not, uh, about the, uh, the age. How old should a person be before they get married? i tell you what, my opinion, my opinion, right, for my girls, i got three girls out there, so... My opinion is the same as the Word of God. Uh, but for, every, for everybody else, it's just an opinion. My opinion is 21. My opinion. That don't make that right. Let me tell you what the Bible said. If she's past the flower of her age. Now, are we going to claim we believe the Bible? Or are we going to really believe the Bible? That's what it says. I ain't arguing with the Bible. You say, well, you mean these 14, 15? I didn't say that. I'm just saying the book doesn't say that a person... I know people that's 28 ain't ready to get married. I know people that's 30 ain't grown up yet enough to get married. I know some that's 40 been married 20 years still ain't grown up enough to be married. And I know some at 15 probably are more mature than some at 30. Say amen right there. Yes, sir. Bible says, if a man behave, don't behave himself toward his virgin, she plays power age. Let him marry. Of course, back in the Old Testament... Uh, the gentleman was 30, the girl was 14, they went together, and that's the way it did, and that's why. And don't look at me like, that's awful, that's the Bible, that's the way they did it in the Bible. I'm not saying you ought to do that now. I killed my girl if she did that. And no, I killed him if he did that. My opinion, my opinion, my opinion is 21. But I might be, you know, I, that, I know some that ain't ready at 21, I'm ready before that. Amen. I, I told Carrie, Carrie came to me, uh, they come to me, and I was kind of expecting it. Her and Todd came and said, we need to talk to you. I said, here it comes. And I think at that time, she's about 19. They sit down and said, we need to talk to you. I said, okay, I'm going to make it hard on them. See, the first time they come to talk to me, we had this little talk. And we had this little talk, and I said, uh, 
I said, Todd, you got to remember this. I said, Carry my girls, all three of my girls, they're like little flowers. They're in my garden. Amen? I said, I've watched these flowers and nursed them all their life. And watered them, and spent money on them, and, and kept the weeds out. All their, I don't see where these boys think that you can pay their, buy their clothes and keep them up all their life, and they can just come in and snatch them out and take them out and all of a sudden make the decision for them. Who, you, I don't know who you, what you've been smoking, son, uh, but, but it, don't, it don't work that way uh, with one of the... And we got one here tonight. getting quiet in here, but I might as well do a little counseling right here at this point. And I said, Carrie's a flower in the garden, and I don't want nobody stepping on these flowers. You understand? I said, okay, okay. You know? And they said, we won't get married. And I think she's 19. I said, no. Not you 21. I ain't even going to I'll pick the biggest fit. I won't do the wedding. I'll raise so much cane. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll. And they said, okay, okay. And they backed down. And they waited until she is. How old was she? 23? Something like that. She waited. She's 23. Now, the Bible don't say that. So don't say, Brother Danny said it, so you're... Uh, the Bible don't say that. That's strictly my opinion and how I felt like doing it with my kids. I know people who waited, waited, and waited, and then messed around and they hadn't got tired of waiting on them, and then they fooled around and married the wrong one. Don't claim to be no authority on marriage. You know what some of you people's like? Some people's like a man that's got all kinds of money in the bank criticizing people that can't pay the bills. That's what some people like. People have never been through nothing, and yet they're an expert on everybody's trouble. I'm telling you, this book is all we've got to go by, and everything else is just your opinion or my opinion. Man, somebody said the other day, said this man was going to marry this woman, and the woman was several years older than the man. Normally, we'd think, oh, you know, but the Bible don't say if he wants and she's happy, he's happy, and they love each other, and God lives together, then, then that, my opinion might be that's a little backwards, but that, that's between them and God. Am I right? Say amen. Amen. You know I'm right. Some of y'all are saying, well, I think, there you go, you think. I know, you think, I think too. But the Bible teaches them that if they're the same age, say one's 25 and the other's 25, you say, that'll work, not necessarily. Say, the man, he's older, the woman's younger. That's normally the way it is. Normally. But that don't mean it's going to work. That don't mean it's going to work. You can't say. You can't say. Coming from different countries don't work. Don't necessarily mean it'll work. Don't necessarily mean it won't. Uh, uh, cultural background don't necessarily mean it'll work. Don't necessarily mean it won't. I'm telling you, there is only one way that your home is going to be what God wants it to be, and that's to do what that Scripture that I gave you a minute ago. Now, I'm just going to give you a few examples of that tonight. Don't you say, well, I hear this all the time. Somebody uh, called me, let's see, a few months ago, and this lady, her and her husband's about ready to separate, and don't even live in this state, so you don't know who it is. And she told me, she said, uh, she said, well, I was young, and we got married too young, and I didn't know what I was doing, and then I grew up and realized that I got cheated out of my childhood, and all this stuff, and I never got the date around, and all that. Well, so what? That's probably true of about 20 of you here tonight. But you cannot fix one wrong by doing another wrong. You must make the best out of where you are, and whatever state you're in, be content. And if God wants things different, let God make things different. If he don't, you just, you know, tough it out and do your best. Like Ann said, uh, him, he's taking his wife, old country fellow up in West Virginia, and he's taking his wife up a uh, hill, and he had a mule. And he had this mule, and he's going up like that, and the mule stubbed up on him, wouldn't stop. And he turned around, and he said, that's one. On their honeymoon, buddy. Right in West Virginia, where my kinfolk live. Mule went on up there a little bit, pulled like that. The mule stopped, and he said, come on! And the mule came on, and he said, that's two. Mule come on, went up there a little ways. Mule stopped. He said, "Come on!" The mule kept, wouldn't go. He said, "That's three. Pulled out his gun and shot him. Fell dead. Grabbed up all their stuff like that. And his wife said, you "Crazy thing. What'd you do that for? Now we have to carry this stuff by ourselves and everything. You are the dumbest, stubbornest hillbilly I ever seen in my life." He said, "That's one." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now see, the Bible says, husbands, look, that's about like some of you fellas in here, amen? 
Like some of you guys, you come home stinking. I'm telling you, bro, you won't take a bath. Uh, you're, you're, oh Lord, I started to say something about your belly. But, but I better not say that. I'm telling you, but you expect her to be Miss America and look like a, she just stepped out of a beauty pageant or off the runway of Victoria's Secret or somewhere. And brother, let me tell you something, it works both ways. If you want her to be nice, you ought to be nice. Bite her up every time she comes in the house. And, you know, the Bible said husbands love your wives, Christ loved the church. And the wife fussed about, well, we have to be a submissive. That ain't fair. We have to obey Him. That ain't fair. Oh, oh, really? Have you ever tried loving somebody enough to die for them that fusses at you every time you walk in the house? Try it sometime. God, I hate God. We had a lot better spirit in here this morning. It was like that one fellow come in and he said, he had three boys and he had one toy. He said, all right, now boys, I don't know which one's going to get this toy. I want, I want, I want. He said, all right, I'm going to give this toy to the one that always does what Mama says. They said, well, Daddy, I guess you'll have to keep it. I like that. <laughs> I like this story. This guy said that these guys playing golf. I mean, some of you fellas, you've got that golf game. Boy, you'll play golf. I don't care. Oh, Lord, if it's your anniversary. Amen. I feel I feel a little conviction in over in this part. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. A man that would put a golf game ahead of his wife. Oh, the shame of it. Oh, think about that. You know, it's funny how that it ain't gonna rain today. I believe it's gonna clear up here in a little bit. But if she wants to go somewhere, Lord, it's going to rain, honey. We can't go, we can't go to your mama. It's going to snow out deep. One fellow is out there playing golf. That's playing golf like this, you know. And they're out there playing their Saturday morning golf, you know. Wouldn't let nothing stop them playing golf. Anything. Weather, nothing. About when John Henry, let's say. And a funeral procession went by going up the road. And Henry stopped holding John and just stopped and put his hat like that and bowed his head. He's, John said, man, you impressed me, man. I didn't know you had that much respect for people like that. Let that funeral procession go by and show that much respect. He said, well, we was married 28 years. <laughs> oh, Lord. Amen, brother. Preach it. I'm not really going to preach tonight. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit. There's a great truth in that. Amen. Here's one about the wife couldn't be trusted. Man's wife had 14 kids back in the old days. He said, if you have one more kid, I'm going to commit suicide. Well, it wasn't long that she walked in and said, I'm pregnant. He said, okay, that's it. I can't live like this. He went out there, got a rope, put it over a tree. And a little bit, he come back in the house. She said, I thought you was going to commit suicide. He got up there and he said, you know what? I got to looking at that rope and looking at that tree and I thought, I might be hanging an innocent man. <laughs> now, how, teach, how does the Bible teach that a man... Some of you haven't been saved long. Some of you just started coming to our church. Some of you only been in here two years. How many... How many people we have in here right now who live in Caldwell County? Lenore, would you raise your hand, please? Raise them real high. If you live in Caldwell County, Lord have mercy. My soul. All right. Uh, there, how many people here tonight live either in Burke or Catawba County? Toward Hickory, raise your hand. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. That's a big crowd, too. Well, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's Wyvern. It ain't where you was born. It ain't where you was raised. Personally, you got a better chance if you're out in the country than you have if you're a big city, but that don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing. Some of the meanest people I ever met, country people. And I are one. Well, how's a husband love his wife? Let me just give you these. You show bitterness. The Bible said, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. These next couple of minutes is just for the husband. Here we go. Ready, fellas? Just for the husband. Really not treating her right when you ignore her. You ever ignore your wife? Does he ever ignore you, ladies? 
Say, he won't listen to me. Well, the truth is, he is listening. He just don't give you the privilege knowing he's listening. He hears everyone. He's heard that song before. Number two, by not valuing her opinion. Here's where a woman is. A woman thinks... You're not listening to me. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Just listen to me. He said, I'm listening to you. I heard every word you said. She said, okay, we're going to do it like this? No, I think, but you're not listening to me. She thinks there's no way in the world you can be listening to her and disagree with her. That's true. I just told you a mouth I said. That's true. They think you could not disagree if you was just listening. You couldn't be listening. I am listening. But if you was listening, you'd agree with me. Now, just because he don't agree don't mean he ain't listening, girls. Don't. I mean, let her, let, just listen to her and listen to her and then say no. I mean, let her say her piece and then say whatever you think. you got a right to your opinion too. Most of these ladies say, well, well uh, I, I imagine it's 50-50. There ain't no such thing. Somebody's running it. A corporation, somebody's running it. Walk into any business, any restaurant around this town, somebody in there has got the final word. Well, they said, well, can't we just both agree? What if, what, what if when you deadlock? What's going to happen when you don't agree? Who's going to say the final thing? Either the woman pitches a fit till he finally gives in, or she does, goes ahead and does, said, well, the Bible said I'm supposed to do it, and does what he said. One or two. And if you pitch a fit till you finally get your way and run your marriage, you're not going to be a happy woman. You're just like kids and bossing mom and daddy around. It's out of balance. It's out of whack. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. If the husband loves you like Christ loves the church, he's not going to take advantage of that and abuse his authority. Right? Just like you love your kids. You have the right to tell your kids what to do, but if you love them, you're not going to just kick them around and be mean to them. And a man who's mean to his wife or hateful to his wife or cruel to his wife and then says the Bible says you both, he's using the verse and abusing the verse and he ain't right with God. So it's got, to, it's got to work both ways. There's a balance. Men, show more attention to other people than you do her. I mean, that won't even introduce their wife when they get... I know preachers that their wife walks back here behind them, you know, when they come in like this. They say, hey, brother, how you doing? Everything. He just walks right in. He don't say, this is my wife. Like he's ashamed of her. He looked at him, he's he done pretty good. Number four. Not listen to her on what she feels like is important. Number five, closing her out by not talking or listening. Giving her the silent treatment. You know, she just talk, 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 and you're just reading the paper. Like that. Uh, you know, that's bad. Six, not scheduling special time to be with her. You did before you got married. Didn't before you got married, buddy, you'd rush home, shave, take a bath, comb your hair, get the money from daddy, do anything to take her out to eat, and now you ain't got time to fool with her. See, that's what's wrong with a lot of marriages. Number seven, not being open to listening on home things you don't want to hear. Number eight, not giving her a chance to voice her opinion on decisions that affect the family. Number nine, making jokes or sarcastic statements about her. Like, getting a little, gaining a little weight there, ain't you? I mean, when you used to, couldn't, you used to could wear that dress. What you do is shrink it. You know, little hint. Usually, when a man makes little statements like that, there's a little bit of truth in what he's saying. He, amen. But now, ladies, do do him a favor. Don't ask your husband. Do you think I'm gaining? It? I'm, don't do that. To him. You put him in an impossible situation. Do you think I'm gaining weight? Well, well, of course. If he says, yeah, you're going to say, I can't believe you said that. If he says, no, you say, you're lying. So don't ask that stupid question. You know you're gaining. He knows you're gaining. So forget it. That's impossible. Get on the Adkins diet. <laughs> Insulting her in front of others. Rebuking her before you give her a chance to explain. Raising your voice at her. Cussing her. Using foul language toward her. Correcting her in public like your daughter or your kid. Reminding her. You ain't got your, no business treating your wife like she's your kid. Lecturing her when she needs to be comforted and encouraged. Telling her how other women are so wonderful. Well, so-and-so does it like this. 
and so did it. Boy, I'm telling you, you fixing to get a knuckle sandwich, brother. You start that stuff. I wish you could cook like my mama. You know what she's going to say? Well, you just go over to your mama's and let her cook you something. Bad. It's like that fellow come in one day. He said, Daddy, Daddy. He said, uh, um, A lot of you guys say, you expect to be something great, and you ain't nothing great. Amen. Disapproving of what she does or how she does. You ever, y'all, any of you wives got a husband that's always critical of everything you do? Easy. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. Everything, you can't do nothing right. No matter what you do, cooking, cleaning, washing, ironing, painting the bedroom, uh, putting wallpaper up, he's got something smart to say about it. That's bad. That's bad. You ought to just thank God she's trying, fella. Man. Failing to include her in a conversation when you're with other people. You know, with other people. Taking it for granted. Not being the spiritual leader in the home. I asked somebody the other day, I said, y'all pray together? Uh, this man one they said nothing. I said, it's a husband's job to grab your hand at night and say, honey, let's pray before we go to sleep. And if you men won't do that, the altar's open here this morning or this evening, and you need to get down here and say, God, help me be the spiritual leader in my home. It's not should be left up to woman to be the spiritual head of the household and make sure the kids get up and make sure you're in Sunday school. I know women that have to have anything spiritual goes on, the woman has to do it. She has to get the kids ready. She has to teach them Bible verses. She has to pray with the kids while he's sitting in there watching TV the whole time. It's a man's job to be the spiritual leader in the home. Thank God. Listen, them girls back there tonight, they know, we pray, I prayed with them all their life. I've told them Bible stories. I ain't been no perfect parent, but there's nothing ever been come between me and them. And by the grace of God, there ain't nothing going to come between me and them neither. I think you're about sick if you let something between you and your kids. I heard about somebody said uh, they was going to get married and that person they was going to marry didn't want their kids. And they said, well, I guess I'll have to give up my kids. I think you need to have your head looked at. Amen? Ain't nothing or nobody do come between me and them girls back there. Man, and you're crazy if you let some knucklehead come in and take the place of your kids. Well, I'm just kind of scattered out here tonight. Now, wives, let me talk to you just a second and we'll be through. The Bible said, let the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, what you women's problem is, is you lose confidence in him and lose respect for him. So when he gets up and preaches, or he gets up and has a testimony, you think... <clears throat> I don't get nothing out of it. You've got to be able to separate that man. That man, he's flesh. And he's, he's got faults. You know him better than anybody. I can't believe he gets up there. I had a lady tell me that one time. She said, I cannot believe my husband stands up in church and gives a testimony because I know him. I live with him. Now the truth is, if we knew everything about us that God knows about us, I can't see how any of us could get up here. So get off that stuff. Get off that stuff. It's a jealous. One lady, every time her husband come in, she's accusing him of something. Accusing him around. She watched soap operas all the time and, and she believed everybody was having an affair. And he's, he come in one day and she looked on his shoulder and she said, you've been out with a blonde-headed woman. He said, honey, I don't know where that come from. Must have been work or something. Next day he come in and she said, oh, you've been out with a black-haired woman. He said, honest, I haven't. I've been to work. I mean, my coat was laying out. He come in the next day. She looked all over and looked all over him. Looked all over and couldn't find him. She said, I know. You've been out with a bald-headed woman. <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes you might have a little right to be jealous. But a lot of that stuff just the devil's putting in your head. A lot of that stuff the devil's putting in I mean, it ain't going to be long. He is going to be out with a bald-headed woman if you keep that up. Accusing him every time he walks in the door. You're just pushing him out. And if he is out with a bald headed woman, fussing at him ain't going to happen. Amen? Just going to make it worse. So what you got to do is reverence your husband. Now, I feel sorry for you. To tell you the truth, I feel sorry for women 
in general. I'm glad I'm, I'm not one, really, and I don't mean that bad. A woman's pitiful. She has to just sit around and wait, hoping some guy will come by and want her. And that's why a woman fixes herself up so much, trying to get, trying to want, you know, get a little attention. Have you ever noticed how, how girls are more worried about their look? They won't go out unless everything first. They're thinking, maybe today. Somebody will notice me. True. Now, see an old man, he can just look around and say, hey, how about you? How about you? You know, pick one out. Well, a woman, I mean, it's changing, but it's, it used to be that they just kind of have to sit and wait. But if you'll reverence your husband and do what the book says and reverence him, reverence him, God will bless you. And you guys, if you'll love her like Christ loved the church, God will bless you. Now, I'll tell you what makes it work. We talked about age difference. We talked about money differences. We talked about cultural differences. We talked about even people speak different languages. Uh, Brother Gary comes, you know, sometimes from South Carolina. Him and his wife, uh, Kukuo, from China. I mean, you wouldn't think, boy, there's a person. Lord, you think about how that people are so diverse and come together and have a good marriage. And other people just like come together and have a terrible marriage. What makes a difference? I'm fixing to tell you and we'll go. Here's what marriage is. It's a commitment. It's all it is. Commitment. Because sometimes you're going to feel good about it and other times you're going to feel bad about it. So you just got to commit. And when you feel bad, stay committed. When you feel good, stay committed and just keep the commitment. That's what it boils down to. Some people didn't just look up and have a good marriage. Their commitment helps them too. Now, I know what some people think about me. But it really don't matter. God knows the truth. I don't believe in divorce. I don't like divorce. Anybody who's been divorced hates divorce worse than people that ain't been divorced. Buddy, I recommended anybody to get a divorce. I think it's the most terrible thing in the world. But I don't think that God's all through with you. If you have been, I think He can still bless you and use you. But it's not the answer to your problem. It's not the answer to your problem. Somebody said, if I was just divorced, I'd be happy. No, you'd be out of one mess and right back into another. Yeah. So you better just stay where God's got you and make up your mind. You're going to stick with your commitment. Even if your flesh is pulling the other way, stick with your commitment. And that's what makes a happy. If every man in here say, all right, I'm going to love my wife like Christ loved the church. And every woman in here say, all right, I'm going to reverence my husband, give him the respect he deserves as my husband. Then that's the best advice I can give you. And you'd go sit in front of a marriage counselor for seventy-five dollars an hour, and he can't pay you nothing no better than what I just told you. God Almighty said, "Husbands, love your wives. Wives, reverence your husband." And you can't beat that. You can't beat that. Take it from old brother Danny. I know what I'm talking about. I've been through this with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and the people I see who make are not the people that just happen to get along and just lucked up and are compatible. It's the one that has problems and fights through them together together. And ain't nothing you can't get through if you'll...